In the news this morning, hundreds are dead in bloody food rioting in Algeria. An anniversary in Israel is marked by violence. And here at home, it's Columbus Day, and the presidential candidates are on the campaign trail. In sports, the Oakland A's sweep the Boston Red Sox, while the Dodgers have the Mets tied at two games apiece. Joe Whitty says an Arctic blast is headed for the upper Great Lakes in the Northeast. And we'll hear from Don Regan on the big changes in the Soviet Union. I'm Deborah Norville, and today is Monday, October 10th. This is NBC News at Sunrise with Deborah Norville. Good morning. There are reports this morning that as many as 200 people have been killed in rioting in Algeria. The trouble broke out last week over food shortages and a government-imposed austerity program. Troops are out in force in the capital of Algiers, and sporadic gunfire is reported in some parts of the city. Damage is said to be extensive. The government has declared a state of emergency and imposed tight censorship, but Western diplomats say that many people were killed over the weekend when troops reportedly opened fire on crowds of demonstrators. In Israel, the Palestinian uprising in the occupied territories is now in its 11th month, and the anniversary was marked, as so many before it, with a new outbreak of violence. NBC's Martin Fletcher reports. Just a chance encounter here. The Arab was driving a wounded man to hospital. Israeli troops want to check his ID. A stone is thrown. This time, the trigger wasn't pulled, but over the weekend, one of the highest casualty tolls of the uprising. Nine dead, about 50 wounded. Palestinians went on general strike to mark 10 months of their uprising against Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Israeli soldiers didn't try to break the strike. Instead, they launched a search mission through about 30 villages. Their aim, to arrest ringleaders and frighten young people from taking part in the uprising. Instead, most of the young men ran into the hills to hide, waiting for the Israelis to leave. The Israelis tore down PLO flags and posters, cleared roadblocks, and carried out house-to-house -house searches. But when they finished, reports filtered through that the kids had come back and were already throwing stones. Martin Fletcher, NBC News, Tel Aviv. There's been another step toward peace in southern Africa. Cuba has agreed to pull its troops out of Angola over the next 30 months. The compromise agreement was hammered out during three days of talks between Cuba, the United States, Angola, and South Africa. There are currently an estimated 50,000 Cuban troops stationed in Angola. And back in this country with about a month to go to Election Day, the Democrats are hitting the so-called quail factor. That's the uneasiness that many Americans have expressed about the possibility of Dan Quayle, the Republican, ever becoming president. Polls indicate that Quayle did not ease those fears during the vice presidential debate. And Michael Dukakis is betting that the flap over Quayle eventually will hurt George Bush. NBC's Bob Kerr is covering the Dukakis campaign. First thing we saw on that Over the weekend, Dukakis labeled it a brand new campaign, a reference to voter concern about Dan Quayle following the vice presidential debate. I chose Lloyd Benson. George Bush chose the other guy. And I think that tells you something about us, doesn't it? Dukakis hopes to make Bush's judgment the issue. On Meet the Press, a Republican pollster said many Republicans are nervous about Quayle. I think it's very clear that the Democrats did get a dynamic out of the Benson-Quayle debate. And I think the question is how much the Democrats, whose campaign strategy so far this year has often been somewhat inept, can take advantage of that opening. There's a new opening for the Democrats, and I think the Dan Quayle factor is going to count in the last 30 days. If Michael Dukakis gets it close, then I think that Quayle is the tipping factor. In an interview over the weekend, Dukakis described Republican campaign proposals as intellectually bankrupt, hoping to provide a contrast. Today in New York, Dukakis plans to propose that Americans be permitted to use existing IRA accounts as a down payment on a home. Bob Kerr, NBC News, Washington. George Bush on Sunday steered clear of the controversy surrounding his running mate. Bush, accompanied by his wife, Barbara, campaign for the ethnic vote in several suburban Chicago communities. And he promised recent immigrants that he would never forget the lack of freedom in Eastern Europe. This will probably be a shorter week of campaigning for both candidates as they get ready for their final debate, either Thursday or Friday in Los Angeles. And today is a day of mourning in Pulaski, Wisconsin, a small town that is still in shock over the deaths of five young girls. They were killed in a car crash on Friday. 
The driver, who is also a minor, remains in critical condition. As NBC's Jim Cummins reports, the tragedy has left people in that town with plenty of questions, but very few answers. Police still don't know why 17-year-old Scott Cars was driving 70 miles per hour out of control when he hit these five girls, 12 and 13 years old, killing them instantly. There was no alcohol in his system. He is a diabetic, and investigators are looking into the possibility he might have had a seizure. This is a small town, 1,900 people. Almost all of them, especially the children, are in shock. Richard Stazuski witnessed the apparent accident. Back in their minds, uh, the people will remember this for a long, long time. James Browner, the principal at the school the five victims attended, has a message for their schoolmates today. That they're going to be angry and they're going to feel bad about to, to know that, for them to know that there's, there's support available for them. And there are places they can go for help. Funeral services for the five girls from this small, closely-knit community will be held Wednesday. Jim Cummins, NBC News. And turning now to sport, the Dodgers pull one out in extra innings to even their National League series with the Mets. While over in the American League, it is now Oakland in four over Boston. John Cricky will have the playoff picture and Sunday's football action when we return. John Cricky here with the sports this Monday morning and the surprise of a lot of Mets fans, I suppose. It's a big surprise, Deborah. That old baseball adage of Yogi Berra that it ain't over till it's over certainly applied last night at New York Shea Stadium, where the Los Angeles Dodgers came from behind to win a marathon playoff game 5-4, to four, and even the series with the Mets at two games apiece. The Mets took a 3-2 to two lead on a home run by Kevin McReynolds in the fourth inning. It was his first hit of the playoffs. This homer followed a two-run shot by the Mets' Darrell Strawberry. John Tudor was the victim. Dodgers trailed 4-2 to two in the ninth when Mike Sosha unloaded off White Gooden. This one tied the game 4 all And Gooden continues without ever having won a playoff game. In the 12th, Kirk Gibson, who had not hit a home run in a month, connected off Roger McDowell, who had allowed only one home run ball all season prior to this. Trailing the Dodgers 5-4, to four, the Mets loaded the bases in their half of the 12th inning. Oral Hirschtides was called on for the final out because of the suspension of Jay Howell. He got it. Kevin McReynolds' soft fly ball to center was caught on the run by John Shelby. Dodgers 5, Mets 4. They're even at two apiece with Game 5 coming up at noon today in New York. Tim Belcher pitches for the Dodgers. Sid Fernandez for the Mets. The mighty Oakland A's already are in the World Series, having dispatched Boston in four straight games. Jose Canseco got the A's off to a fast start again when he hit one out in the first inning off Bruce Hurst. It was Canseco's third homer in four playoff games, 1-0 Oakland. Reliever Dennis Eckersley of the A's was voted playoff MVP. He recorded his fourth save by getting the final out. The A's took game four, 4-1, four to, to sweep the series. The World Series opens next Saturday in the National League City. There was a mild celebration in Oakland after the sweep yesterday. In the NFL, the Cincinnati Bengals continued their remarkable turnabout from last season when they won only four games and lost 11. This year, the Bengals are a perfect 6-0. They strike fast, trailing the Jets 9-0. Quarterback Boomer Esiason connected. I was there to call it. Alone setback is a rookie runner, Icky Woods. It's Eddie Brown going in motion. Turning it upfield as Esiason looks at him and lets it rip. Eddie Brown on the run and Eddie...